now, you guys. So, Hoople's cat, my friend from the far north, has been doing some videos on drought. And he asked me to review some of my systems with him and you guys. Uh, just as a high-level overview, I'll see how weedy I get. Um, we were without power for a period of 10 days over the winter, and during that time, um, we're on a well and a septic system and a drain field. So if our power goes out, our water, water goes out. So I brought up some topics uh, that were pretty uh, well received. And so he just wanted me to touch on a few things and a few different things we've been doing in preparation for the water drought. And, and anyway, let's go with that. <laughs> I have uh, some water catchment systems. You can see this is one that comes from my roof. We have three of these, 55-gallon barrels. Um, come, they come into the barrel, and then I've got a spigot down here, water comes out of. So we've got these throughout the property. Really useful for watering plants and things like that. However, we have a composite roof, just a regular shingle roof. That's something people don't really talk about, is if you have one of those kinds of roofs, you really shouldn't be drinking that water. Um, I'd put it through the Berkey and drink it, but you have to be careful about what you do with it. Not only is the water itself, it's gone over this asphalt shingle system with the tar and, and potential carcinogens. Um, but there's also bird crap up there and other animal crap. And so you really need to think, wow, that's rainwater, that's awesome. But it's not just rainwater that's in these barrels. There's other stuff. Unless you're capturing water, like literally from the sky as it falls, then you got to worry about that. One of our other backups... We've got a above ground pool. It's our redneck swimming pool. It's 10,000 gallons, which is almost 38,000 liters. It was a saltwater pool. We preferred that for our skin. However, we have just recently switched it to the chlorine bromine base. The reason for that is that um, we can make this water potable. If it's salt water, I don't even know if going through a Berkey would help, but um, we've changed it. so. If a uh, situation came where we needed to start using this water for watering plants, etc., we would immediately stop using it for swimming, and we would consult the FEMA guides on using pool shock for uh, decontamination of large quantities of water. I'll link that, um, some articles on that below for you to take a look at. All right, let's go over and check out our well. It's 111 degrees today. That's a dog who knows where to, where to lay. All right, onward. On the back side of my big garden now, and this is our well house. So that's where our uh, mechanics and the water softening system and everything is. But this is the cap that goes over our well. This is a simple pump. We had this installed several years ago. Well, when we moved in, eight, ten years ago. And that way, if the power goes out, I can hand pump this, which I've done before. So this well, we have a deep well. If we took this cap off, we could measure how much water is in here, and I think I'm going to figure out a way to do that. Because if we're going into a drought, I want to know how much water I'm going to have in my well. A really easy way to do that is to take this cap off, put a string with a bob on the end of it, some weight, go down, see when it gets wet, pull the string back out and measure that distance. My static water starts at around 200 feet. My well starts water intake at 425 feet. That means that when this well was installed, the static water was at 200 feet. And where the water comes in, it's 425, so 225 feet of aquifer water down there. Is it still that deep? Well, the well is, but what? how shallow or how deep is the static water? We've got an underground river that runs here, which is awesome, but we have neighbors not very close, but we have we have neighbors. We got a dairy over there, and we're upstream of them, um, so they're getting what is you know what we don't take up is going over to them. So we have to be careful about that. But we have other neighbors around, so we need to be thoughtful about our water use, which is a um, one of the other reasons um, I wanted to talk about our septic. Not only do we have septic, we've got a drain field which means the water that we use inside the house when we're done 
using it, it goes through the septic and then into the drain field. So it goes back into the earth. It doesn't go to a water treatment center plant anywhere. It goes back to the earth. And then the people downstream from us eventually will be able to reclaim that water. Um, let's go look at some more stored water we have in the house. So if you saw the vi video we did when the power was out, you noticed that we have quite a few of these containers. We have about 10 of them actually, um, between uh, two and a half, four, no, two and a half, six gallon. This is a five gallon cube. These are eight gallons. So I've got, I think, six more of these. Um, we have them out in the RV right now. However, we keep these on hand and they're full. Um, that most most of the time we try to keep them full just in case we needed them like we needed them over the winter time. Let's uh, go in the house and take a look at our two liters. I don't think I've ever actually shown you guys one of my stock rooms before. But this is something super, super easy. These are two liters of uh, soda, soda pop containers, right? I have 70 of them. So it's 140 liters of extra fluid. Every time I drink one, I fill it up with water and I have them spread throughout this whole room in addition to lots of my other foodstuffs, but I won't show the whole room off. But you understand what I mean. Easy. Drink it. Fill it. Put it somewhere. Put it under your bed. Put it in the closet. Put it anywhere and you'll have it. We use these a lot when the power went out because it's so lightweight and just so easy to handle. Washing your face, brushing your teeth, um, you know, washing some dishes. If you didn't want to lug around one of those big, uh, like the five gallon container, it's 40 pounds. This, this is half a gallon. So what is that? Four pounds. So super easy and light. So something you should think about doing. Ta-da! The toilet room. So knowing that we're coming into a drought, we have uh, rethought how we use our bathroom. When we were without water over the winter time, we found that we could fill a bucket with just like a liter and a half of water, pour it into the toilet bowl and it would flush. This particular toilet is a very low flow toilet, so it was just about the same as flushing it. I mean, it was not uh, ounces different than filling up the back to flush. So we installed a low flow toilet. My other toilets in my house take gallons and gallons of water to flush and this one does not. So that's why we use this toilet. Um, we have decided exclusively that if we ever do run into a problem where we don't have enough water or power, this is the bathroom we're going to use. We have three bathrooms. This is multi low flush toilet. So this is what we're going to use. And we'll haul water in and use this toilet. But this isn't the only option back in the garage again. So two options. This one is, this is a cassette toilet. You guys have seen these before. This actually holds water so it flushes technically. So you put water in here, you can pull, push this down, it flushes the toilet down. You pull open a lever, whatever's in the toilet bowl goes into a, a cassette, which is down here and you can take that out and dump it manually. So that's something you could use very low water and you can really control how much water you use and then you just take the byproduct and use what you want to use it for. There's also the old, um, you ever see the luggable loose? Basically it's a toilet seat that snaps on top of a bucket. That's just dirt in there so don't freak out. Um, you can buy a toilet seat that snaps onto a bucket and then you don't even have to use water for this one. You just use the facilities and then you put some kind of organic material in between each time of use so sawdust leaves anything that soaks up um, smells so that's really easy and then you could take this container once every day or two out into the yard and pour it into um, wherever you've designated your fecal and urine matters to go. You know me, I would use the urine for fertilizer and um, probably compost the fecal matter um, and use it as humanure. 
So that's that. So now let's talk about bathing and getting clean. We have one of those Coleman camp showers we've used. Water gets hot, perfectly great thing to use. We also have a, well, a different kind of a camp shower that pumps up and uses, instead of using gravity, you know, with the Coleman, you have to hang it up and gravity comes down. It's a pump system. You pump up, create pressure, and then the hose water will rain down upon you. The camp shower heats up with solar energy. Um, the pump one, you can heat over any kind of a flame, fire, or gas stove, etc., etc. This is a very cool thing. You see this... Um, country stock tank here. It's 110 gallons and on the end here you can see two different kind of rubbery tubes sticking off the end. I actually have a wood stove set up, a wood stove that goes off the end of this. And it is called a chofu. I'll link that information down below and I doubt you guys have ever seen one. Um, so it's a wood stove surrounded by another um, metal chamber and water will, cold water will come in from the bottom tube, go into the wood stove, circle around the burning chamber, and then go in the top tube into the bathtub. And it will continue back and forth, back and forth, and you uh, can figure how hot or cold you want it by how much wood you put into it and then by adding cold water into this bathtub. So we use this at my mountain place. Um, we've since sold that, so we're trying to figure out where we're going to put that here. The beautiful thing about this... Oh, shit. Okay, you guys, now it's three days later, if you can believe it or not. Um, when... I was filming here last, it was 115 degrees, and my camera kept stopping, so this is my third or fourth take just in this section alone. Okay, so anyway, back to the wonderfulness about the Chofu with a little wood stove attachment out there. 110 gallon tank, I can heat it up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which means not only can you bathe in there, you could do laundry in there, you could do massive amounts of dishes in there, anything that you need a hot water for that don't want to uh, heat up food or uh, water in your house uh, this would be perfect for um, and then you can still utilize the water that's in there so you can put um, so there's the top rubbery thing and the bottom that rubbery thing and then underneath is a drain plug so you can put a hose on it and run it anywhere and utilize any leftover water in there which is a huge water saver in a drought situation so let me finish then by talking about um, some other ways to save water. And let's look at uh, something we're going to plan to do in the next few months. I cannot share with you how much my mood has improved since the weather has dropped under 90. Gosh. All right. So you remember in the beginning of the video we talked about toileting and using the toilet on the inside of the house. Well, this window is that same bathroom. This is also where we have a peaked part of our roof. We actually have an attic in here that runs the length of the house. So what we plan to do is put a, a platform out here with a cistern, 5,000 gallon cistern on top so we can catch water uh, runoff if we need to from the, the ceiling or the roof, redirect it into the cistern, gravity feed into the house. Gravity feed is a wonderful thing, no pumps, no manual pumping, no generator. Uh, it's it's a gorgeous thing. So that is a future plan. Uh, we had planned on doing that when we had uh, the power outage due to the winter, and now we see even a greater need now that we know we're coming into a serious coming in. We're in a serious drought situation. So anyway, that's what I got for now. Got everything. Look how much damage carrots everything is just fried but again I'm on a well so we're running the well on these the stupid sprinkler setup just so the everything gets watered luckily because I'm using the deep uh, mulch method here I only have to water this garden not even once a day once every few days where 
my raised containers and anything I've got in buckets I'm watering several times a day. Anyway, that's, that's another video. So, anyway, there you have it, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about what we're doing for water and our emergency water backup systems. Swiss chard bit it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.